the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture, mental health to economics, relationships to life lessons. Join us each and every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on WAC 90.1 FM. The Living Room. Casual conversations on serious topics. The hardest thing to do in Trinidad and Tobago is to go to work the day after a holiday. It's a problem that I did not have to experience today. Um, <laughs> I may sound like I'm boasting, but um, if you didn't know, now you know it, it's about one minute after 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked on to the True Nation Station, WACK 90.1 FM, where we are culture c -c 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 crazy. So first and foremost, let's kick it off as we always do, all right? Must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us and in our traditional style, not just the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, the Tainos and the Kalinagos, because we all know, accept, and reiterate now that Columbus lied. But also to our brother in music, Tony Prescott, where the P this week stands for positivity the reason right. i'm saying that is because uh as you know the the world and um, trinidad, and, trinidad and tobago has celebrated diwali yesterday right and i wanted to acknowledge that this is a, a celebration of light over darkness right. right it's not just about going by neighbors and getting food which is what a lot of the other p words that all you thinking would have been you know, the parata, the parasa, that kind of thing. Nah, Diwali is about the positivity. Right? It is about the picture of the light over darkness. So, the, die the P-word this week. You know, I actually didn't even think of those other P-words. Yeah, well, again... Because, more, because yeah. you said dietary restrictions, I don't party. Okay, okay, okay. Well, again, remember, right? you're, the, you're the cultured fella too, you know, so you would really look at it from more than one angle. It would not just be about the, the delectable treats. Yeah. Um... Guys, if you don't know, this is The Living Room with yours truly, DJ Aaron 868. I'm always great and I'm never late. Alongside my bro bro with no bro. Mm -hmm. Ricardo Mitchell, the baby face stage. At least until I grow back my goatee. <laughs> right, and this is another edition of The Living Room, all right? Um, really quickly, hanging hot, wiping feet. I want to wipe my feet this week as I do every week for the past three weeks. I am putting down my maroon. I'm done. I'm done. This is now toxic. I am going to stop supporting West Indies. But I'm so patriotic that is until the next series, whenever that is. Yeah. That was just terrible. Anyhow, Rika. Yeah. I want to hang my hat to Warish for the work that they're putting in to prepare for the concert next week. Yes. And for those of you who don't know, Warish is responsible for that lovely welcome to the living room intro that we play every week and the concert next week they, because of the sold out um because the demand of for tickets was so high they were sold out and now they actually moved to the larger auditorium so i believe tickets are on sale again so i want to hang my hat to them to for the event and for the continued success going forward you know i did not know that sapa had two auditoriums yeah i found out because of this exactly yeah. um so it's time to head across to our first segment um, it's not me with a Y, because my name is Williams, but Willie with a Y. All right, let's take it in. As far as I'm concerned, as long as crime and criminality benefit the few, crime will never stop in this place. I mean, I might have a smile or it look like a smoking, but situation is dire and it's very serious. I mean, within the last 15 days or so, we've seen three children, unfortunately, become victims of crime. I want to be frank, but I also want to be frank without opening myself a pre-action protocol letter. So when it is that the persons we have entrusted with seeking our 
best interests as citizens are turning the scourge that is crime into a political game, we have a problem. You cannot politicize crime. And it cannot be that while you're all sitting in the Senate, playing the fool and trading insults back and forth across the four years, some people like the back and all, you know, I mean, I myself like the back and all sometimes, but while you're all doing that, blood running in the streets. All you have police escorts, all you have security details, we don't have that luxury. 2025 rolls around and elections come around, both sides going to be coming and competing for your, your finger to dip in the ink to say, well, hey, put us in power, we will fight crime. Nonsense. Absolute swim call. Because the longer all you take, the more frustrated the population is going to become and citizens are going to take matters into their own hands. Not everybody could build 15 and 20 foot high fences, you know. Not everybody could afford to live in a gated community where you have to roll up by the gate and somebody asks you for identification and who you're coming to before you go and check whoever. Most of us do not have that luxury. And while all you're playing the fool, we are the ones suffering. The situation is becoming dire. Our standard of living has been declining steadily. Some of us understand, yes, sacrifices need to be made. And some of us could adjust and flex and adjust our wallets to suit. But not everybody has that luxury. Where else in the world do we superior officers, commissioner of police or acting commissioner of police, etc. Come on TV and tell the population what are their plans to fight crime. Remember Operation Leap and Operation Anaconda and, and all these other dotish names that they, they're giving these, these so-called plans to fight crime? Where well, you're coming on TV and telling us what you're going to do. So the criminals don't watch TV too. <laughs> you, could, you could really understand the nonsense and what has been taking place. Well, they're not serious. Well, they're not serious. And then I remember back in the day, way back when I was at the University of the West Indies and criminology was one of my minors. One of the things we learned was that because we are an island and because of our proximity to Latin America, Crime would basically be with us constantly. You know where else is our island? England. Does England have the same problem where crime and criminality is concerned? I'll let you answer that for yourself. What what it is? What it is? What is stopping us from getting our act together? I don't know if you all could remember. A little, some just a little instance where the port, for example where they brought in an x-ray machine so that you didn't even have to open containers. You could x-ray the containers to see the contents. And the goodly PSA president at the time, as I refer to him, Supreme Leader for Life, Emperor Admiral General, it rhymes with fluke, came and protested against the use of the x-ray machine, saying that it would cause the workers on the port to get cancer. The workers eh, who not going to be in the machine, the machine is going to scan containers. So it just, you have a container, the machine runs along it, scans the contents of the container. But you are telling me that using the x-ray machine would result in your workers getting cancer. You know how long that machine lasted? One week. They destroyed it. It cannot be used. So how am I now as a somewhat right thinking citizens i mean as i always say sometimes you could put two and two together and get 22 other times you put two and two and you get four but how is it that i am to not believe that all in cahoots that somebody paid off somebody to mash up the machine because they don't want what is being brought in to be seen and that's just one instance. We really need to get serious about crime in this place. 
things need to happen. Something has to be done. And those in authority need to get their act together. You all need to come together for the benefit of the nation as a whole. Not no nonsense about party before country. Not no nonsense where all the disconnected from the people on the ground. All you need to put all the differences aside for the benefit of Trinidad and Tobago. Because we have no viable third option, we stuck with the two all here. And something needs to be done. We cannot afford the things that you all can. We cannot build fences that are 20 feet high. We don't have security details. We don't have those luxuries. We have to go and look for it like everybody else. And you're always looking over your shoulder because you don't know if you are the next target. What kind of life is that to live? Come on, man. I know I said last week, those who can do better should do better. And you all need to do better. I also wanted to talk about West Indies today, you know, and the absolute swim call cricket that they play in these days. But I'll leave that for another day. Oh, you see I went green today, right? there. Yeah, so... Good luck, St. Benedict's tomorrow. Big four finals against Fatima. Bring it home, boys. So, until next week, this was Willie with a Y. And because of what Willie just said, I must remind you that that is why we did that entire two-month series on addressing the violence. As well, the, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, through the different ministries, is doing a lot of outreach programs and men's groups and all these different things in the communities which I think persons should seek interest in or also attend if so inclined. Right? Yeah, well, will you um will you see will you see everything that had to be said in that segment. So thanks again Richard Williams, aka Willie with a wife for that contribution. And no, we are not family. <laughs> on, on another note, I want to extend the greetings from please and Tanku. Hello friends, my name is Dana Tanku and today I'm going to be sharing a thought or two with you. First things first, Diwali greetings to everybody that's tuned in. I really do hope that this season brings you peace, joy and lots of prosperity. So let's jump right into it. Last week I mentioned my conspiracy theory that Waso was trying to frustrate us as a nation from the ground up. And the same day that the episode dropped, so too did a 36-inch pipeline on the Godino Bridge in Oropooch, which affected a large portion of southwest Trinidad. If you didn't believe that conspiracy theory before, I'm pretty sure you're considering it now, right? So, Diwali is oftentimes referred to as the Festival of Lights. Um, Tiantek. Did you get the memo? Because we had a whole lot of power outages during the week now, boy. This was your time to shine and you kind of let us down a few times. Now, Trinidad and Tobago has some of the lowest electricity rates in the Western Hemisphere. And that may be a very large reason as why we do not necessarily absorb renewables into the home as easily because it's so cheap and affordable power that is and we can easily rely upon tn tech now even though i'm joking with tn tech about you know it's your time to shine but you're not really shining right now tn tech is one of the more reliable distribution systems that i have heard of yes we may have small outages but ultimately the supply is pretty much pretty much good right now as I was saying, even though we have the lowest electricity rates, the conversation has been started so many times about integrating renewables into the home. And this is your opportunity to really think about it, to think about installing things such as solar panels, solar water heaters. So you may not necessarily need to depend on the electricity supplied by TNTech so that you in, an, in the event of a power outage, you're still going to have power into the home, you're still going to have hot water to bathe in, and your day-to-day -day activities would not be 
fully compromised because you're cut off for a moment. So that's my contribution for today. The conversation has been started many times, so let's choose to continue it, please, and thank you. And we can look forward to hearing from her again personally next week. Nice. Right? But Iran, you know, uh-huh. we're wrapping up the mental health month now. Um, right. Uh, we had to go in a direction that we didn't go in before. I don't right. think we ever had a discussion like this before in the living. Yeah. Think properly, I uh, want to introduce Alana Jordan, nurse Alana Jordan. She's a certified nursing assistant, massage therapist, yoga instructor, entrepreneur, phlebotomy technician, and physical therapy student. She's also completing an extensive program in Alzheimer's and dementia care. She has over five years professional experience in a variety of healthcare settings, including private clinic, private home care, and assisted living facilities. She's adept in working collaboratively with a team to ensure patients to receive the highest possible care and is currently at WJL Senior Care. Right, so. So for Rish, take us away as we are welcoming Alana into the living room. Right. So, Alana, we, we want to ask you first and foremost, the question that we've been wanting to ask you for the past, well, let's say, month and more. Ricardo, that's how long we trying to schedule this interview. It's been, it's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple of weeks. So, we just got it a month, right? Um, we're going <laughs> to ask you the easiest question you're probably going to get here this afternoon. And we're not asking you, where's the bird hummingbird? Or where's the gist receptionist? We are asking you, Alana, how are you? Oh, I am great. I'm thankful that, you know, I wasn't affected by the weather. I was right. able to enjoy my day off. And here I am with you guys looking forward to this conversation. Now, let, 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 let's get to the meat of the matter. Or if you're a vegetarian, the beans of the matter. All right. What sure. is what what happened there, Ricardo? Yeah, no, that's you. You on you in ripping form this evening, Aaron. <laughs> so, Alana, um, we think that elderly care is just as simple as making sure your grandparents or your parents are fed, or they get the medicine, or they're comfortable. But what really defines elderly care? Oh, Aaron, it's so much more than that. Um, elderly care is specialized care. All right. Um, it is designed to meet the elderly throughout different stages of life to fulfill their needs and all their requirements as they age and go through their golden years. So it stands from at home care to nursing care to hospice care, assisted living care, you know. It's a lot, a lot more than just making sure their clothes clean and they're fed and they get meds. Okay, um, just for those of the those of us who aren't familiar, what is a hospice? Hospice care is care that you know you you, you suffer from terminal illnesses and there's no um, help for you anymore. Okay, so so that's where that's where they will go to a hospice. Yes. Yeah, so. And if memory says we correct, I think there's a hospice at the St James Hospital. I am not familiar with hospice care here in Trinidad in terms of it being a specific facility. I know there are nursing homes that facilitate hospice care. Okay. I don't know of, personally, I don't know of any facilities here in Trinidad. Okay. All right. So if you don't mind my asking, well, what is your your specialty? What is, what is it that you're trained in? And if you could explain it a little bit for those of us who don't know. Okay. Well, me personally, I'm... Um, a certified nursing assistant. Um, I do have dementia and Alzheimer's care as well. Um, what we do is we assist you with day-to-day routine. Things that you may no longer be able to do on your own that you would need some assistance with. Um, we do daycare services as well. Like if your family needs to go out for the day and you cannot be left unattended for let's say advanced in, the, in a case where there's advanced Alzheimer's stage two and you need to be you know looked at 24 hours they would we would house you for the day and then they pick you back up in the evening same as they would with um a child's daycare mm. 
This this is news to me. And did we do it like for people that goes on vacation as well? Um, you know, it's a problem with elderly to travel with Alzheimer's and dementia. It's an issue of getting them to travel from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. As much as you'd like to take them on that family vacation, you don't have a choice but to leave them behind. So we could accommodate them for five days, a week, two weeks, whatever period that you're traveling for. You know that they're being cared for and looked after in a safe, secure environment in your absence. So it is actually a thing. <laughs> this is this is refreshing. What is the organization that you or the establishment that you work out of? I work out of WJL Senior Care. It's located at Lot Four in Richard Trace in Santa Rosa Springs, Arima. And I say we because I'm part of a team. I cannot independently take care of a person on my own. It requires a team of professionals trained in this particular field. I don't know if you could give a, give us a little insight as to what is like for you. Why are you a nurse? Why are you in in particularly in elder care? What is what is this for you? I have to get a little personal to answer this question and to be honest about it. All right, sure. um, I have a friend that lived abroad. He was paying a caregiver eight thousand dollars a month to take care of his dad expecting that the dad would have proper care and all his needs would be met. Now, this this salary is separate from food and bills money and, you know, stuff for her to live, her accommodations. And when he came back, his father was in a deplorable condition. Mm -hmm. So this nurse was taking the money and she was not caring for the gentleman. I the condition that he was in I was heartbroken because I went to visit as my friend for years I haven't seen him in a while and I went to visit and when I saw the condition of his dad I was like no 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 go get me a box of baking soda and I just started to take care of the bed sores and dress him and change him and stuff like that and then I was like you know what you need to let this person go she's not doing it because she cares um I can't even say she's doing it for the money because I think if you're doing something for the money you would do it the best of your ability because you want to secure your employment True. You know, um, she wasn't taking care of him and I did it. And up on his dying bed, he asked, he said, Alana, they put me in a home on two occasions and it wasn't a nice experience and they had to take me out. So we figured having at home care would have been the best for me. And it turned out to be the absolute worst. Promise me that you're going to go and do the course and you're going to do this because you could make a difference. And I just said, OK, and I came home. But. You know, when you make a promise to somebody on their dying bed, you, something inside you ignites that makes you want to live up to that promise. And that is how I got into elderly care. My goal was to work at a private hospital. Hmm. If I could be candid for a moment, uh, when my mom was on her deathbed, the last conversation we had, she asked me to continue being the type of gentleman and to continue being helpful and to continue caring for people and that was such a a major anchor point it it really moves me that there are people who do what has to be done because it has to be done but they they care enough to do it properly I think a lot of the times we confuse, let's say in this case, the elderly care with the elderly mining. You know, is, is, that is that is of the utmost importance. Yet still, it is often overlooked. Mm-hmm. We don't see it. We could call on a, a um, I'll use our slang here. We we'll call Chanchi and, and and Uncle to come to our eye and help out around, but they're not. I don't think. They can't care, family members can't care for other family members, mm-hmm. but it's it's a little more in understanding them because every stage as you go older is different. Your needs become different. When the Alzheimer's or the dementia kicks in, that, that whole, that's a whole other thing because imagine watching somebody you love that you just talked to and told them that you love them and have a good day that you're going out to it. And when you get in, this person don't know who you are and is afraid of you to come close to them because they don't recognize you from anywhere. It's, it's, it's a painful thing. And I don't think the untrained person has the patience 
to deal with something like that the way that it needs to be dealt with. So elderly care is, is something that is of grave importance and it's completely overlooked, completely. Now, you, you, you're speaking there and it resonates with me because recently I, I have elder, elderly family members who have different ailments, right? And you are talking there about dementia and I hear some persons in the village which I was born and, and grown in, that's in Madeline that have dementia and I hear of the difficulties that their family members endure dealing with them where I was born. I'm hearing like persons that I know, like young men around my age, uh, saying that, you know, they, their mom or their dad has dementia and they would go and they would talk to them now. And then five minutes later, as you said, Alana, they go back and the parent is refusing to talk to them or acknowledge them. The who's you? Or even if it gets worse and they start to use obscene language. There are different forms of dementia, a lot of different forms. Um, I um, I recently enlisted into a class, um, a more advanced class, to learn the different types of dementia and how to deal with them. Some, um, as you mentioned, you'd forget the person. Um, that happens a lot with Alzheimer's. Um, with some dementia phases, you would have a conversation now you might have this sporadic outburst and use profanity and then 10 minutes after you cannot recall that you just did that i've seen somebody put up a pot to cook and put a slippers in it and they're cooking chicken completely mm. away and it's not an issue for a mental hospital it's just the brain not functioning the way that it should and this happens um i think a lot of times this happens with our lifestyle. You see, when you're young, if you don't have a healthy lifestyle, it makes things so much more complicated as you eat. I think if if this is you're a there? yeah, I think this is if you were looking for a wake up call, I think this is it. Definitely. Um. Uh very very good friend of mine a brother of mine has been a primary caregiver all right for a parent who is suffering with dementia and it is a challenge to process the feelings that you have because of one of those interactions and then continue caring knowing that this person may not even know that this is what they said to you or how they treated you uh, I understand now, um, why, as you mentioned earlier, that it is difficult for the untrained person to care for. I mean, but as a human being, though, how does how does being in that position affect your mental health? Because you know that, well, all right, they don't mean it, but the fact is they said it anyway. You know, how, how can you separate, well, hearing this from feeling any way about it and then continuing to perform? That's where patients come in. You have to just ignore it. You can't afford to take anything personal. You have to, you know, understand that this is work, this is a disease, this is an illness that they're dealing with. They have no control. So why would you now take it personal? I have to leave that alone. And just be patient with them. A person with dementia and Alzheimer's, the brain takes at least four to five minutes to actually comprehend what is being told so you'd have to repeat yourself a lot you'd have to wait and give them a chance to respond so it requires a lot tremendous amount of patience and you can't afford to take anything personal on any level hmm. you, you, you know ricardo you always talk about your top three favorite professions mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. well the top three favorite people generally yeah right call-ins right. good parents good teachers and, and number three was a, a floating position but a starting yeah i starting to see that caregivers huh, my so because, god because you, you see how you're saying that you, that you, you you can't take it personal because you have to understand that it's a mental illness and an ailment that you're dealing with it it's a lot easier to say that than probably be in that scenario 
Oh, for I some agree. persons. I agree, Aaron. What I tell my nurses is that, listen, think about it this way. It's like walking through Port of Spain or Arima and a vagrant says something nasty to you. You're going to say, will you stand and argue with that vagrant? You won't because you know he's not in his right mind. So see it in that aspect and just move on. I'm not saying that the patients are vegans. Eh? Don't miss yeah, yeah, right, right, right. yeah. No, no, we get the analogy we're going for. <laughs> yeah, just see it in that aspect. And it, it has worked with the nurses. And when you have young nurses, they're very open. And when I have that chat with them, they tend to understand and kind of bring themselves to where they need to be. And have that level of patience. No. You go ahead, Aaron. No, you can go ahead, because I, I, I yeah. yeah, I was I was going to ask about this young nurse's comment. One, listen, you you're talking about this young nurse's thing like it's not you're not a young nurse yourself. All right. So I I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well played. But secondly, um in terms of your team, tell us a little bit about the team that you work with. You mentioned that you're working with professionals and it's a team of caregiving professionals. So oh, what are the types of things that and again i'm not saying are, are, are shopping wrong but i am saying that it's good to know the types of places and people that in the event you have to seek elder care who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with so if you could tell us a little bit about how you all function it could help us set a bar for what to expect in terms of if i'm not getting this well then that means i'm in the wrong place okay we first of all i when you come into me, they, they, I, I do my interviews in such a way you have to do a working interview. All right. Mm-hmm. I create scenarios for you and I listen to your response. I would sit on a wheelchair and you have to move me from the wheelchair to the bed or to the couch and then move me back from there and put me to make sure you're doing the right thing. Because you could come with all these certificates and then the com- compassion, the humility, the basic know how is absent. So I tend to kind of make sure that it's there from the beginning. I do not, I believe in coaching and not demeaning. So I would sit, if I see you do something wrong, I'll sit and I'll talk to you. One of our requirements of nurses there is your nursing certificate, of course, um, first aid and CPR. And then because I'm always learning something new, I'm always taking courses um, because I'm doing gerontology. I did nursing home management, I did Alzheimer's and dementia. So I'm always improving myself. So I come back and I teach it to them and I encourage them. So, you know, do the certificate. It's, it's, you'll be surprised at how much you would learn. Okay. So that would be always on the same page. Again, for the untrained air, this is me. Um, gerontology. The caring of, of, of geriatrics. Thank you. It explains, it explains, um, gerontology basically explains the different stages of aging and how to care for the elderly at each individual stage. I want to throw a little bit of a spanner in this thing here. Not far. What, how do you Uh define elderly in terms of the age bracket what is the age bracket do, do is there a lower age limit in terms of the people you admit to the home a nursing home is a little bit more elaborate than you would you will have um i'm sensing that you have a concept that it's just elderly people there they do we we accept patients for recovery as well so you had a surgery you come out of the hospital you need to adjust to being in a wheelchair to being a, a newly um a new amputee Mm-hmm. So we are just to being in our wheelchair and coping with day-to-day living and stuff like that as well. You had surgery, you need to, to come hip surgery, whatever you want an accident, whatever injury it might be. We facilitate you as well. So it's not just for elderly or senior citizens. Mm-hmm. Right, so- That's just on, on the whole. But in terms of, but to answer your question, um, I have seen in a nursing home that people say there's an age where Alzheimer's and dementia kick in and I don't believe that that is true from experience because I have a 92 year old currently that 
he's now started with dementia. No, 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 start with dementia. He's very self-sufficient. He takes care of himself. He does everything on his own. Mm. He even makes his bed and he's not required to make his bed. And then there is a 59-year-old. Is now, again, well, I can't say now, about for the past two years, dementia. The reason I ask what I ask, the way that I ask it is because my peer group is 40, 40 40-ish, right? Some of the young boys like Aaron and them still have a couple of years behind them. But I'm looking at the very real possibility that any of my peers could become bedridden. They could have reduced mobility. They could, I mean, we have like you mentioned lifestyle before. You know, it could be an amputee, it could be diabetes, it could be vehicular. There, there are any one of a number of reasons we could end up needing this recuperative care, right? This assisted care. And it's the type of thing that it is uncomfortable to think about, it is uncomfortable to discuss. But again, in the living room, we we try to have the serious conversations. As, as casual as we may present, we try to have serious conversations because what we what we are learning particularly over mental health month and then going forward into men's health is that a lot of people have common problems and think that they're going through it by themselves or they don't know where to turn they don't know what the resources are so the premise of a sibling as Aaron mentioned he has friends who have um parents who are starting to suffer with the, the the mental health decline we talking about aging parents or the premise of even one parent uh, passing on and now yeah, the other parent while they may have been fully functional within a, a couple now they have to start navigating living by themselves yeah, right yeah. you might be in need of a nursing home at any point in time you might be in need of nursing at any point in time and I think if we have more conversations where we meet people like you. Wait, by the way, I now realize very, very rudely. I didn't ask if it's to call you Alana or Nurse Jordan. Alana is fine. Whatever you're <laughs> I'm not going to say this. This is, you know, clarify this like 30 minutes in. And like, <laughs> wow. This is terrible protocol. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, so Alana is um, meeting, meeting the people, right? You know, you know Trinidad already. Everybody have our opinion and our comment and our perspective and we just we tend to broad brush. But meeting the people and realizing that they are qualified professionals who enter the, the, the industry because they care. Not because, well, it how work. Let me go and do my certificates. But because they care. Right? Mm-hmm. Because some people get called and some people get sent. And you know nursing homes and assisted living facilities, they, they have they come with a stigma. And it's a very bad one. I mean, there are some of us, well, the owners and managers of the facility that are not doing the right thing. Eh? Let's, 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 let's be honest. We're not going to make it just sound like all peaches and creams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are those that actually do what is required of them. You know? And the stigma comes from both the home and the family. Because I've seen family drop off their loved ones and never visit never call never do anything they just pay money at the end of the month or three months in advance and then they go on and these loved ones are like oh my god did they come i I wanted to see them and you drop off something by the gate and you're gone emotionally it takes a toll on the family i could understand why some of them would not want to see them because it might be heartbreaking but it means so much to the person that's in there that's just two minutes of conversation would make the entire week because they're grieving. They now have to adjust to being, you know, away. So the Mm -hmm. stigma, that stigma of homes, it comes from both aspects, both the family and the the homes itself that are not doing the correct thing. In the right environment, you know, it can be a very pleasant, uh, reassuring place to be because, you know, loneliness and isolation and boredom is what happens later on in life when you're in those golden years so being in an environment where there are people that you could conversate with at your own age and you know there's physical activities and all these things for you you tend to be you tend to make it tends to make life 
you know a bit easier for that person um there's something that 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 that, that that's wow i just rocked the table there yes there's something that's speaking to me within this conversation and it brings me back to my days as a, a younger gentleman probably in primary school around standard four to form three when annually we would make visits to the home for the aged down on route avenue ricardo mm -hmm. or i distinctly remember as well when we would make visits to the hospital as two and we would go there and you're going to visit your family member but the person on the bed next to them engage in the conversation between you and your family member more than you because nobody coming to visit them and some of the most enlightening conversations i've had within my 36 years of life have been with strangers in the hospital because they just sometimes want someone to talk to and even worse if you happen to know the person from before like there's somebody you know father or somebody you know grandfather or uncle mm -hmm. and it hurts to, for, to hear them saying tell my grandson come and visit me now it i, I don't know no even i can't completely what you're saying because when i first started working it was the hardest thing for me to cope with um there was a patient she's 79 she was just close to her 80th birthday and she is there and she's telling me all week she's saying it i'm going home for the weekend you know i'm going home for the weekend my daughter come in for me i'm going home for the weekend i was like oh yes she say yeah and i'm going to have a birthday party and all of this and she wasn't going anywhere and i didn't know how to tell her she wasn't going anywhere I had to put to sit down. I say, you miss your family? She says, yes. I say, you really want to go home for the, for the weekend? She says, yes. And I made the call. And I spoke to the family member and they, told, they said that they just couldn't do it. They couldn't. So I bought a cake and I bought ice cream and I told her they drop it off. Up to this day, she never, I don't work there anymore, but she never knows that. She never knew that the family didn't buy it. I left her with that image. No, I, as... <laughs> As we admitted, it's going to be hard on both the person in the, the facility as well as the family in this scenario. It is going to be hard on both parties. But I think we need to do better to care for our elders in the families. I, I really don't know how else to say it in Ricardo. And I think I, I entered this conversation with hopes of sticking to what we set out to discuss our talking points and this has been somewhat of a reality check i going to call my father as soon as we finish recording well, One, I... <laughs> de de definitely gonna call mitch as soon as we come off um that's what's called that's what's called it huh? that's what everybody will call my father that's mitch I, I, no, 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 I accept that's what you call your dad. Mitch Pops, young boy. Yeah. Today's the 25th of October, which means that my grandfather's birthday is on the 30th, which is Saturday. Hmm. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be here. So I need to make sure I go and check him in the morning early. So you, you. Anyway, let me let me not say nothing. You know, you plan your trip. You have to work, etc. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. Yeah, what I'm saying is, make sure I make, sure make a check little him time. Yeah. Right, and don't forget to give him a call. Cause what a young boy, he might call two or three times, and you know my sleeping hours, and I might miss the call. And when I return the call, he literally just calling to touch base. Two minutes, three minutes of conversation, and he good to go. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to talk about things from the other side now. As a child, we don't always appreciate what it is the parents had to go through. And because we're watching the times changing around us, I'm going to be playing. A lot, of, a lot of adults have issues with their parents. They're upset with their parents. They're, they're vexed with them. They're not punishing them. But the grace and the patience that you know, would hope that they have. 
it's not always there it's not always there is there um you mentioned activities and being able to communicate with people within the the age range or at least within the the experience in terms of this new community for somebody who these aren't people that they know these are not people that they grew up with etc what kind of activities wow. and engagement do you have for them that has helped build this new community well we have parties where they get haircuts and they groom and they engage in social conversation with each other we have yoga for the first for senior citizens we have um a period where we sit well that this happens daily where we sit and discuss current events and what's taking place in the news we usually do it after breakfast or before breakfast it depends you know on how they get their, their timing for getting up and their schedules and stuff like that um so it's usually after breakfast and these are things that you know help them to communicate with each other get to know each other we play so games we, board games we're always playing board games and I'm going to ask so we play no all fours um all fours happens but i'm not involved <laughs> in that one. but it definitely does happen because a lot of them you'd be surprised they love all fours mm-hmm. so like i was joking with them and saying to keep a tournament <laughs> Listen, I for the young boy birthday, 85 years old, you know. As we walk in the doors, he and three partners sit around the table with a coffee and a mm-hmm. freshly brewed deck of cards, you know. Ah yeah. boy, he be he be he be I know he went and play. Nah, he plays smart. He he went he went in the kitchen and tell me to sit down for him, even though they were already losing the game. <laughs> <laughs> we have listeners who lean in on the mature side. And the idea that they have about even this communal living, right? I don't know those people. Who are they? Um, I could handle myself. That type of thing. It's almost. It sounds almost as if this is a a, a season that you could venture into comfortably. Yes, it's because um, you give them a tour. They see the facility and everything because you know it's fairly new to them. A lot of people are very skeptical about putting their loved ones in a home. We, well, at WJL Senior Care, we invite you to come, come and take a look, spend a, a half, a half an hour, an hour, observe, and then you make your decision from there. So we try to make them a very comfortable into you know making sure that everything is okay for their loved ones, so they can enroll them. You know, we involve um, them in holiday as well, eh? Or like okay. when we have games night and stuff, we invite them to come. It's very important. We believe that it's very important that they still maintain that bond, and it's not just like okay, they tired of me, so they put me in a nursing home. Which we mm-hmm. try to take out that stigma from their minds. So we have the family involved. We won't have everybody all at once, right? But we'll take it in strides. Wow. This is this is very. I I know for me it this it definitely dislodging some biases that I had, just based on my ignorance. I mean, yes, I would have visit children's homes and that type of thing, but in terms of the elderly, I would if I didn't with the elderly, it might be one on one. In terms of going into a communal living environment, uh, assisted living environment, I not I haven't done much of it. So I, I honestly had ideas based on just the way people talk or the things they might have seen on TV. So the the the, the my question has for Ricardo. So mm-hmm. in your in your younger days, Ricardo, you never visited uh, the home for the aged or anything like that. Not so much the home for the aged, right? And way well, this this episode kind of hit in my heart. So when I was in kindergarten, preschool, I remember sitting in a taxi and a woman. Her name was Ira. She used to live on the main road in between San Fernando and Vistabella. She looked at me and found that at the time I looked like a very young Patrick Manning, which was very interesting. I wasn't even wearing glasses yet. But those words put in my head the idea that, you know what, I might, I might have some leadership in me. Cool, great, all well and good. And for some reason, I couldn't understand at that age, four, five, six, this, this woman just took a liking to me. I would go and visit her. I mean, it wasn't as regularly as it probably could have been or should have been. But 
Christmas, I would get a little card. Birthday, I would get a card. I would go and check her song. But this, I, she was an aged woman. There's, there's no doubt about it. It was almost like it was a third grandmother. Just the way that I thought of her as a child. My neighbor, Miss Vida McLeod, up the street running um the shop, right? Sometimes I go on for hours. I up by the shop. Lyman with Miss Vida, when you send me by the parlor to get something, don't feel like coming back anytime soon. I, I grung off, I might be buying a five dollars in pigtail, but I buy the shop for three and four hours just talking to Miss Vida. Miss Vida is also an octogenarian. I think she have a couple of years on daddy. Right? What I mean is I didn't visit homes, but that doesn't mean that I didn't spend time with. You know, and now thinking about it. I, it would explain why I'm such a beacon of righteousness and purity here. And I had all these wise people pouring into me from young. It makes sense. Only thank you for helping me solve this. But um <laughs> but the very real, the very uh tangible reality is that a number of our generation might end up in communal living environments as they age. Less people making um less children, it's harder to buy property. What, what do you think your option is going to be in 30 years? You know, what 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 type of living do you think we're going to be in if it's not assisted living? Well, and I'm going to say, in the budget that we just read at the end of September, mm. the retirement age was increased to 65. Hmm. So, for me, I would now be God's willing. No, I mean retire, not 65. Sorry. No, no, no. I know I don't think about it properly. But no, I, I think this is a conversation that we need to um we really need to do this again. Alana, I want to thank you. This is Mental Health Month. One of the things that is most frightening is aging. Aging is a is a scary thing. And I want to thank you for answering the call and the nudge although it sounds more like a push and a shove eh? to go into this field into the the geriatric care into the elder care rather into recuperative care into people care i want to thank you for that because now you start a conversation in my mind that we're going to have to continue having we're going to have to start to lean into it because we're not getting any younger and it's encouraging to know that there are people like you who care and who are driven to not just study the thing, but to improve the fact that you are continuously uh, re-engaging new courses and training, etc. That is encouraging to me. That says to me, hey, listen, I don't have to be afraid of, well, nobody coming to visit me or making sure and just to come and visit me when I get old. What I mean is I could comfortably say, listen, there are places where I could age gracefully. I could age with the assistance and the attention and the professional care that I would need. There are places where if something happened to me, my fear of, well, who goes see about my boy could be comfortably alleviated. I, I want to thank you for starting to introduce the, the premise of future peace. This is a big deal for me. It is. I told you it's something that is often overlooked at the beginning of the program. And that is what it is. It's, it's often, often overlooked. And I will tell you, you're welcome and thank you for having me. And I do look forward to having another conversation with you guys. Because the more where people are is, is, is the more our loved ones would be would get be able to get the care that they need. And we all well, the fear just like yourself would be elevated. This was not the conversation we sign up for, you know. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I said that already, you know. Um, I, I don't even know what to really say because is a wake-up call that was needed, but is not one that I signed up for. The reality is, Ricardo, as you know, I have elderly grandparents still with, with me who mm. are ailing. I have a father who is still in recovery from major surgery. And it, I don't know, it's like 
I've never really thought about this and I think it's something that I have to think about and also have that conversation with them about. Hmm. And we are there are facilities that would accept both of them, eh? We accept couples as well. You have your private room, you have your privacy, everything like if you're living at home, it's just that it takes it it, it offers a more carefree lifestyle whereas everything is catered for you. You don't have to get up and wash, you don't have to cook, you don't have to clean, you, everything is being done for you. So it offers a carefree lifestyle. But you're still together. Aging. You, you know, there's one thing that we didn't get to address that I'm going to pop in for next next show. Mm-hmm. Sure. For the like as as your family members grow older and they still want to express that level of independence. I know that's going to be a big shift for them from taking care of themselves going into a home where they are going to be taken care of. So that's something that we need to pop in and to talk about how difficult it is for that transition, for them to not be the ones that get up and washing or cooking or cleaning or whatever, to now being the recipient of care. I have a very different view. I have a very different view of this now. And it would not be it, it would not be me if I didn't make it awkward and ask. No, Ricardo, we are perilously close to the end of the program, so I I just I just want to know, right? In terms of being able to live with people taking care of me, making sure that I eat properly, making sure that I engage socially, making sure that I'm I'm. I, I get my little spotty and my little mark and shape and my cleanups in terms of making sure I'm up to date with current events in terms of making sure that I am well cared for. I'm not too young to to come. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm what saying is it's something like a pretty it's something like a pretty sweet deal, you know. Only have Wi-Fi, for have Wi-Fi, I could and I could work from there. It might be cheaper yeah. than it might be cheaper than paying the rent and groceries out here, you know. I, I I think that's where you go wrong. Eh? Taking care of an elder and a resident is is, is costly. It's, uh, well, li- listen, living outside here costly too. But um, yeah. But for the quality for the quality care that you've mentioned, and honestly, I really feel more comfortable about even broaching these types of conversations. And Aaron and I are definitely going to be talking about this off air. This is, is just how we roll. But right. I I am grateful for you. You actually, again, this was not a conversation we want. We were going to have, you know. But you, you start something here. Yeah. You started something. I want to I wanna thank you for that. Just yeah. your, your expertise and just the, the way that you, you know, you express, like you, you speak very professionally, you know, but you hear any passion. You hear any passion behind it. So, and not only that too, I want to thank you for the people who benefiting from the passion you have for what it is you're doing. I never took the time to thank you themselves. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I say it on behalf of WAC because I'm sure all the listeners are, have benefited from today's conversation. Um, thank you very much for the work that you do, the human service that you are doing for the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, this is your truly DJ Aaron 868. I'm always great and I'm never late. I remind you that love is the currency. Let somebody know that you love them today. Call your mom, call your dad, call your grandparents if they are still there with you. Your aunts, your uncles. Let them know that you love them and you appreciate them. I have real names to call, so I can't do that here. Right? Um, I'm off this week. I'm actually off to Tobago very early in the morning after I go and check my grandfather. So, be safe, guys. Yeah. Well, this is Ricardo Mitchell, the social sage and the local st- Wait, no, no, no. I don't remember. <laughs> I cut, I cut it off. So right now I'm Ricardo Mitchell, the baby face sage, and I want to thank you guys for joining us in the living room. Remember, guys, the hourglass is opaque. We don't know how much time remains, but whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. Now, before we hand over to Mr. Desmond, I'm going to ask Alana, Nurse Jordan. Is there? Yeah. Would you have? Do you have any closing remarks for the listeners? And if you could give us the contact information, so that we could get in touch with the home. 
All right. For the listeners, for those that are taking care of elderly persons and senior citizens, mm-hmm. please respect them, show them compassion, have humility, and above all else, have patience. Practice patience with them. All right. We are all going to get at that age at some point, and we want to be cared for adequately. So do unto others as you have them do unto you. My contact is two seven eight six six seven eight via WhatsApp only. Or you can look us up at WJL Senior Care Limited on our Facebook page. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And Ricardo, you ain't get a disclaimer. She already said for WhatsApp only, but that number is for WJL Senior Care. Business purposes only. Only. Right? It, it's hard that we have to even see it but it is what it is right so alana thanks very much and you know having been a guest in the living room we have to have your back yes thank you i appreciate that all right nicely so um mr desmond is up next with the big band uh iran have a safe one in tobago y'all i'm going to call my dad right now so have a good night keep it locked <laughs>